need to get some water on it. <laughs> so we're gonna do a Insta Garden. Very simple technique. You may have seen variations of this. This is my way of doing it. It's just basically cardboard, a little bit of topsoil, and some mulch. And uh, some people cover all the cardboard with, with topsoil, which you can do. And, I, for, and I'm just planting squash and melons this way right now. So I'm just doing the hills out of the, the uh, topsoil and planting the seeds in those hills and then uh, just covering the cardboard and the hills with mulch. So I just uh, take the cardboard, piece of cardboard, cut an X in it, and that's where I put the, the uh, topsoil over it. So I have a piece right here, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I just cut an X here. For uh, squash, I put the hills about a foot and a half or 18 inches apart. They tell you to do it farther apart, but uh, I like to uh, bunch plant stuff, and for squash, that's plenty. Make sure you wet the ground down first. If it's not, this is already wet because I've been watering what I've planted, and you can do, you know, you can do this over several days. I usually don't buy uh, topsoil. But um, I've used up all my stuff that's ready, and I have more, but it's not ready yet. So it's composting and different things. Now I'm going to add a little bit of azomite to it. You can look up azomite if you don't know what it is, but it's uh, nitrogen and minerals and some other stuff. Good stuff. And maybe a tablespoon to each hill. And now the mycorrhizal fungi to jumpstart the microbiology. And I just make a, a pinch, you don't need a lot. So. Now we're going to add some seed. In this case, we're we have a few spaghetti squash left, so we're gonna add those in right now. But as we do that, we're gonna mix up the soil a little bit with the azomite and the fungi in it. So, very simple. I usually plant two to a hill, some people plant three to five. So um, I find that two is usually good in case one doesn't come up. But then if one, if none of them come up in a particular hill, you'll get a couple more in another hill. You could transplant them if you really want to. I don't do that, I just let it go because that's not what nature does. Nature just, they just grow wherever. So I'm using grass clippings, but you can use old hay or straw or leaves or whatever you have for a mulch to do this. I actually prefer working with straw, but I have grass clippings and so I'm just going to use that because I'd have to buy straw. It's that simple and then you just water it, wet it down real good and keep it wet till everything sprouts. And then you still want to keep it moist. 
You know, and that helps the cardboard lay down and everything. So here we are. The zucchini coming up. A bunch of the squashes. I don't know if you can see, but I got uh, melons and cucumbers. I got watermelon, cantaloupe, and pumpkins. A couple different kinds of pumpkins all coming up now too. So we'll see how this works out. Gotten a few zucchinis already off of those plants. And we'll see as soon as the squash starts producing how long it takes. Well, this is the philosophical farmer message. <laughs> I often use a garden as a metaphor for the mind. I call it the garden of the mind. So why is this important? It's important because your thoughts and your core beliefs are what create your reality. I'm going a little uh, metaphysical here on you. <laughs> but it's true and you don't have to take my word for it. You can do a little experiment where you uh, take uh, notes of your thoughts for about a week. The turkeys want to be on uh, camera. <laughs> there they are. There's a couple of them. They found the trees also too. Anyways, take stock of your thoughts for about a week and then compare at the end of the week that with your life. I think that you will be shocked at how close your life parallels your thoughts and your core beliefs. Now sometimes you have a thought like, you know, I want $10,000, so how come it doesn't just show up in the mailbox? Um, it's because your core belief is that there's no way you're going to get $10,000, you know. That's the way that life works. So now back to the garden analogy or metaphor, if you will. So if you don't plant anything in your garden and you just let it sit idle, what happens? Well, I think everybody knows that it fills up with weeds and stickers and undesirable things that you don't want. So you have to plant what you want. Every thought is a seed that brings forth fruit after its own kind. That's all it can do. That's all it can do. You need to be mindful of your thoughts because that's creating your reality. Now, and of course, like I said, if you don't believe me, go ahead and try my little experiment. Now, you don't have to take down every single thought that you have during the day, but that dialogue that runs in your head, the main points of it, take a notepad with you and write those down. You will, you will be surprised. So that's really the message to be mindful of your thoughts because they create reality. It's called the law of reversibility. The law of reversibility is mechanical motion can create heat, then heat can create mechanical motion. If the voice creates a vibration, then the vibration can create the voice. A good example of that is a recording. So you record a voice like a song or something, you play it, play back that vibration recreates the voice. That also applies to your thoughts. So if circumstances can create certain thoughts in you, then certain thoughts in you can create circumstances. Okay, think about that one long and hard. So that's really the message, folks, is be careful what you plant in the garden of your mind because that's creating your reality. Turkeys are really wanting to be on camera today. Hi, guys and gals. <laughs> One of them finally got up in the tree. I was wondering when they were going to do that. Remember, every thought that you think is a seed you're planting in the garden. Think about that. Think about what kind of fruit or vegetable you want to bring forth with your thoughts. Most of us just passively plant the garden of our mind with music, with TV, with internet, with the people we hang out with, that kind of thing. The good news is you can take control of that process and create the reality that you desire. Here's the uh, squash and uh, melon garden. It's been pretty hot, so it's uh, some of it's uh, drooping a little bit because of the heat, but it's got plenty of water. Got lots of blooms. All those blooms back there are uh, pumpkins. And then some of the ones closer are different kinds of squash. And right in the front here is zucchinis. There's some watermelons and cucumbers in there somewhere. 
<laughs> so that's going to conclude this video, my friends. I wish you all the best. And uh, we will talk to you soon on the next one.